Hey guys, the video that you're just about to watch was taken from my online medicine interview course, which consists of a number of videos to help you guys do well in your medicine interviews. If you guys would like some more videos on how to do well on the interviews, there are a ton of free videos over on my online course. The link for that will be in the description down below. So feel free to go check them out. I've been giving interview courses over the last two years. So I really do hope you guys enjoy the course and find it beneficial. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this video. Hi, is it Mr. Smith? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Hi, can I just start by confirming your name and age just to make sure I have the right uh, patient here? Yeah, that's just uh, Sam Smith. Mm -hmm. um, I'm about 58. Oh, lovely, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I, I've just um, I've just had a quick chat with one of the doctors and I, I don't know your story uh, entirely, but I was, uh, from what I understand, you've been waiting quite a while here in, uh, in the A&E. Is, is that right? Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no. Yeah, you know, I just had a word with um, just the doctor there, or mm. rather even with the receptionist, and I just, I'm just baffled, you know. I could be having a very big emergency, and I've been waiting for like two hours now. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and nobody's explaining to me what's going on, and mm. it, I just don't think that, it's just not on. It's yeah, not yeah. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand as to why you, you'd be frustrated. Mm. Um, so I wanted to, to come and personally apologise on behalf of me and the, the rest of the team. Um, yeah, unfortunately today we've been a bit understaffed and I know it's not uh, an excuse, but um, yeah, today we've been a bit, a bit understaffed and it's, um, it's been a bit tough. And I can absolutely assure you that all the doctors, um, including myself, are all putting in um, as much effort as possible to, to have you seen in time. And I know that you're waiting a long time and that isn't acceptable. Um, but it's something we're trying to we're, we're trying to work on today. And um, I hope that you will be seen soon. I, I have spoken to the doctors and I have reminded them that you are here and I will ensure to, to continue to do so until you are seen. Um, but yeah, I wanted to personally apologize for that. Yeah, you know, I, I am aware of the you know, the pressure, you know, all over the the NHS. But again, you know, it's just, you know, again, it's just mm. a case of, you know, if I'm having an emergency, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I can't, I can't possibly feel safe having waited mm. this long just mm. to speak to someone. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. No, I pretty understand, like, your concern, but um, to kind of explain to you how it would normally works in any, is it's, it's on a priority uh, basis, and I understand what you're going through is um, is uh, difficult as well. Right. But if you you know if, if like you mentioned, if you were to come you know with a heart attack or something that is um, extremely dangerous, yeah. then you would be the first seen 100. percent But um, you know it does work on a priority basis, and not necessarily first come first served. Mm -hmm. It's it's based on who has the cl highest clinical need. So when you when you came in, I'm sure you may have been triaged by one of the nurses just to assess your severity and um it is a good thing to, to let you know that you know you 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 are on the list um but you're not the number one thing a number one priority which is actually a good thing because it, it's it, it goes to show that you're not um uh, immediately um unwell and we can manage you in the in, in a good amount of time yeah does that make, kind of make sense yeah no that makes sense yeah. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. Is, is there anything I, could, I can kind of do to make your time here waiting more comfortable at all? Well, you know, just, you know, I just have, you know, things to do at home, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously, you know, I haven't eaten and I yeah. came here, you know, mm -hmm. just thinking, okay, let me, you know, jot down to a &E, like I'm always advised to if I have a problem and, mm -hmm. you know, get it sorted before it becomes a much bigger thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry to hear you, 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 know, you haven't even had lunch yet. Um, is it, uh, what I will try to do is to maybe speak to the canteen. You know, maybe we might be able to, to, to sort you out a sandwich or something like that. Would, would that be something you'd be open to? Yeah, 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 yeah we can do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate that. Definitely, yeah. I'll go speak to canteen after this and see if we can arrange some food. Um, do you have any other concerns at all that I can, I can address or help you with? Well, I mean, the main thing that I came here for was, you know, lately I've been feeling, um, you know, I've been feeling, you know, a lot like vomiting a lot mm -hmm. and I've been getting headaches. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know. So I was a bit concerned because obviously, you know, on, online I saw, yeah, yeah, you know, somewhere that it said, you know, headaches and you know, vomiting mm-hmm. is usually associated with something, mm-hmm. you know, quite bad going on, yeah, yeah, cancer, mm-hmm. you know, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, as a medical student, my knowledge is quite, you know, is not as uh, specialized as the doctors. Um, but I understand it's so concerning to you. And um, I will pass this on to the doctor, you know, who's, uh, who I'm, I'm shadowing. And I'll see if, uh, if he has any concern of that. And if he does, I definitely, um, we definitely will come and deal with, deal with you and do with concern. Um, in regards to vomiting and headaches, I'll, you know, I'll speak to, to him about whether or not we can give you something for, to help with that. You know, maybe some paracetamol or um, some anti-sickness pills that may, may at least make you more comfortable while you wait. Does that sound yeah. reasonable? Yeah, yeah, I think that sounds reasonable, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for understanding. And um, as I said, I will make sure you get seen. And um, if I can help you any other way at all, please come and find me. Yeah. Yeah. So no, as I mentioned, my name is Kenji. So. All right. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you, Kenji. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Thank all you. Right. Cheers. Okay, so now let's have a look at the angry patient scenario, which is one of the most common scenarios that comes up in the multiple mini interviews and medicine interviews in general. Again, Sean is gonna be acting out the patient who is upset and we'll see how I, I manage to control him and make you feel better about the scenario. So let's get started. Hi, is it Mr. Smith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's me. Hi, can I just start by confirming your name and age just to make sure I have the right uh, patient here? Yeah, that's just uh, Sam Smith. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm about... 58. Oh. Okay, so the first thing I did, which I recommend you guys do, is just to confirm you have the right patient. Even if it's not a patient, even if it's like a, a random person you're told to talk to, especially if it is a patient, however, make sure you start by asking them, could I just confirm your name and age just to make sure I have the right person in front of me? That will really impress the interviewer and show them that actually, you know, you do have what it takes to be a doctor because that's what doctors do. So let's carry on. Lovely, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I, I've just... Um, I just had a quick chat with one of the doctors, and I, I don't know your story uh, entirely, but I was, uh, from what I understand, you've been waiting quite a while here in uh, in the A&E. Is that, is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so I started with a brief introduction as to who I am, and also telling him, you know, why I'm here, and also just, you know, confirming with him um, that the information that I've been given is actually correct. So saying to him that, you know, what I've been told you've been waiting here for a while by one of the doctors, is that correct? And this is just to level the playing field and to make sure that we uh, we know exactly what we're going to be dealing with and also to broach the topic of, of dealing with the situation. Yeah, no. Yeah, you know, I just had a word with um, the doctor there, or mm. rather even with the receptionist, and I just, I'm just baffled, you know. I could be having a very big emergency and I've been waiting for like two hours now. Yeah, yeah. You know, and nobody's explaining to me what's going on, and Mm. I just don't think that it's just not on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I completely understand as to why you you'd be frustrated. Mm. Um, So I wanted to to come and personally apologize on behalf of me and the rest of the team. Um, Yeah, unfortunately today we've been a bit understaffed, and I know it's not uh, an excuse, but um, yeah, today we've been been a bit understaffed, and it's um, it's been. Uh, a bit tough and I can absolutely assure you that all the doctors um, including myself are all putting in um, as much effort as possible to, to have you seen in time and I know that you're waiting a long time and that isn't acceptable um, but it's something we're trying to we're, we're trying to work on today and um, I hope that you will be seen soon I, I have spoken to the doctors and I have reminded them that you are here and I will ensure to, to continue to do so until you are seen um, but yeah I want to personally apologize for that yeah okay so the way that i approached it is first off by just apologizing and saying look i'm sorry i understand what you're going through to really show understanding and then give a bit of an explanation as to why you know he's been it's been taking so long for him to to be seen and not to lie you know um if they, if they, if they do tell you some example like you know you're on the star or maybe there's been can- some cancellations and the doctors aren't showing up then you can use that as a reason and say look i'm so sorry and the reason why is this and then finally also provide some reassurance and say you know know what i promise you that i will try my best to get to make sure you're seen i'll remind the doctors as often as i can and try and give some reassurance that he will actually be seen in time you know i i am aware of the you know the pressure you know all over the 
the NHS. But again, you know, it's just, you know, again, it's just mm. a case of, you know, if I'm having an emergency, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I can't, I can't possibly feel safe having waited mm. this long just mm. to speak to someone. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. No, I pretty understand, like, your concern, but um, to kind of explain to you how it would normally works in any, is it's, it's on a priority uh, basis, and I understand what you're going through is um, it is uh, difficult as well. Right. But if you you know if, if like you mentioned, if you were to come you know with a heart attack or something that is um, extremely dangerous, yeah. then you would be the first seen 100. But um, you know it does work on a priority basis, and not necessarily first come first served. Mm-hmm. It's it's based on who has the cl- highest clinical need. So when you when you came in, I'm sure you may have been triaged by one of the nurses just to assess your severity and um it is a good thing to, to let you know that you know you 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 are on the list um but you're not the number one thing a number one priority which is actually a good thing because it, it's it, it goes to show that you're not um uh, immediately um unwell and we can manage you in the in a good amount of time yeah does that make, kind of make sense yeah no that makes sense yeah mm. Mm. Okay, so the next thing is that he expressed his concern that, you know, what if I was having a heart attack? Is this the same treatment I've been getting? And I I then moved on to explain to him that actually, you know, the reason why you haven't been seen first is because it's on a priority basis. And of course, if you were you were having something severe like a heart attack, you would be seen first. But right now, you're not the um, the number one uh, on our list. And that can seem quite hard. So to deliver it in a nice way, I said to him, um, and that's actually a good thing that you're not actually being seen first because it means that you're clinically well. You're not in a, an emergency situation. And this is the reason why um, you haven't been seen first. So I'm giving him the truth. I'm giving him facts, but also providing him with some reassurance, you know, and that's really important to do to try and address any concerns that he might have. So, um, is, is there anything I, could, I can kind of do to make your time here waiting more comfortable at all? The next thing that I did is something that's really, really important is to ask him and say, look, can I, how can I make you more comfortable? Is there anything that I can do to, to make your, your time here more comfortable? And if you're in any sort of scenario like this and you're dealing with some sort of patient who's upset or unwell, do you know see what they have in mind. You know, It makes it a lot easier if you just ask them straight up and say, how can I make you more comfortable? What else can I do to help you? And that really makes it so much easier for you because they will normally tell you exactly you know something that you can do to make it more uh, more bearable for them well you know just you know I just have you know things to do at home mm-hmm. you know and obviously you know I haven't eaten and I yeah. came here you know mm-hmm. just thinking okay let me you know jump down to a and like I'm always advised to if I have a problem and mm-hmm. you know get it sorted before it becomes a much bigger thing mm-hmm. um, but yeah okay you know. yeah I'm sorry to hear you you, you, know, you haven't even had lunch yet um, is it uh, what I will try to do is to maybe speak to the canteen. You know, maybe we might be able to 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 sort you out a sandwich or something like that. Would, would that be something you'd be open to? Yeah. And Sean gave me a hint. You know, he said he hasn't eaten, so he didn't directly say to me. Actually, the way you can help me is by getting me a sandwich, getting me some lunch. He dropped me a hint saying, actually, you know, I'm, I'm hungry. And you know, in your stations, it's really important to be creative. You know, if he does say that he's hungry, just come up with an idea and say, you know what, we have a canteen here. I can, I can maybe see if I can get you a sandwich. You know, even though it may not be possible, the interviewer will see that you're actually, you know, what, you're being creative. You're coming up with ideas as to what you can do to make the patient as comfortable as possible, and that's a really, really key thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Definitely, I'll go speak to Canteen Artists and see if we can arrange some food. And as you can see, he accepted my offer and he said, "Yeah, that'll be really nice." And that hopefully calmed him down a little bit and bought you some more time. Do you have any other concerns at all that I can I can address or help you with? Well, I mean, the main thing that I came here for was, you know, lately I've been feeling, um, you know, I've been feeling. You know, a lot like vomiting a lot, mm-hmm. and I've been getting headaches. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was a bit concerned because obviously, you know, on, online I saw, yeah, yeah, you know, somewhere that it said, you know, headaches and you know, vomiting mm-hmm. is usually associated with something, mm-hmm. you know, quite bad going on, yeah, yeah, cancer, mm-hmm. you know, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, as a medical student, my knowledge is quite, you know, is not as uh, specialized as the doctors. Um, but I understand it's so concerning to you. And um, I will pass this on to the doctor, you know, who's, uh, who I'm, I'm shadowing. And I'll see if, uh, if he has any concern of that. And if he does, I definitely, um, 
we definitely will come and deal with, deal with you and deal with your concern. Um, in regards to vomiting and headaches, I'll, you know, I'll speak to, to him about whether or not we can give you something for, to help with that. You know, maybe some paracetamol or um, some anti-sickness pills that may, may at least make you more comfortable while you wait. Does that sound yeah. reasonable? Okay, so there's, a three, there's kind of three points that have been raised here. The first point that he said is that he's feeling sick and he, um, he has some headaches as well. And that's again another hint of something you can do about it, you know. As a medical student, you can say, you know what, I can go and see if the doctors can give you some, some painkillers or some anti-sickness pills. So that's the first thing I did. The second thing he mentioned was cancer. You know, he's scared that it could possibly be cancer. And it's really key here to not go in and say, actually, you know what, headaches and um, and vomiting has nothing to do with cancer. Don't worry about it. You'd be completely fine. And provide him with some false reassurance. Because you're only a medical student, there's not really much you can do. But what you can actually do is say to him, you know what, I will pass this information on to one of the doctors and if they do believe that it's something like that then we definitely will let you know the last point i want to raise here is that every time i make a suggestion i always follow it up with would you be okay with that or what do you think about that and you know it's really, really important to show the interviewer that you actually are considering the patient you know you're considering their view what they want rather than saying okay don't worry i'll get you a sandwich i'll get you some painkillers i'll get you some um, anti pills and i'll be fine and we'll, we'll and we'll be on our way that's very much like a dictator and it's really important to work with your patient and say this is what i think might be best for my opinion what do you think about that and that really shows the interview you whether you are involving the patient in their care yeah yeah i think that sounds reasonable yeah okay yeah yeah well thank you for understanding and um as i said i will make sure you get seen and um if i can help you any other way at all please come and find me yeah yeah so no, as i mentioned my name is kenji so all right yeah. thank you no thank you kenji i really appreciate it yeah no worries thank all you right. Yes. Okay, so to conclude with something like that, it's really important at the end just to say, is there anything else that I can absolutely help you with? If you feel like you have addressed their concerns so far, things go in the right direction, and you feel like there's not really much else to say, just conclude by saying, is there anything else I can help you with? And if that's it, the actor will say, actually, no, you've been very helpful. Thank you so much. And if they have anything else they need to add and other things and other tasks that you need to get done in this station, they will hint again and mention exactly what you need to do. So that is the dealing with the upset and angry patient scenario. As I said, it's very common that this uh, station is asked. So to give you my conclusion, Try and you know keep the patient calm and find out exactly what they want. Try to address their needs. Ask them straight away. You know what can I help you with? If you're a bit confused and you don't exactly know what's going on, just say, "How can I help you? You know, is there anything that I can do for you?" And again, try and pay attention to all the hints they give you. You know, Sean gave me a few hints here. He said. I'm really hungry, you know, I have, I'm feeling sick and I have uh, headaches as well. You know, he's giving me hints as to what I can do to help him. And lastly, make sure you're, you know, you be creative. If you can go to the canteen and get a sandwich, offer to do that, you know, come up with ideas on the spot and be very creative to try and show that you actually care about them. You actually want to help them. And if you do those very few, you know, simple things, I guarantee you'll do very well in the station. So let's move on to the next one.